In the previous video, we had discussed about the introduction for nomenclature for alicyclic compounds. So if you haven't already checked it out, do check it and then start watching this one. So when we have both a double bond and a substituent, the double bond gets the lowest set of locants. Okay, I'll just put that here. That is 1 and 2. So the double bond will consist of the numbers 1 and 2 and the substituents are, no, are numbered in terms of the first point of difference rule. So here, um, so basically here we just have one substituent, right? So it's, it's easy for us to just put in the numbers 1, 2 and or this is one way of putting it. So our double bond is at the first position. But instead of writing it like this, it's better, even better, if we write 1, 2 in this order, thereby having a methyl group at the first position as well as the double bond being in the first position. So the name of the compound would be 1-methyl. And since it's a pentane ring, cyclopentene. Pent 1 in. Similarly, in this chain, we have the first and the second position occupied by the double bond. Now, if it had been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it would the methyl group would be in the sixth position. And instead of that, we can have the methyl group at the third position itself. So the compound's name is 3 methyl cyclo. X one in. Now, when you have two substituents, that is where things get a little bit different or unique. Okay, uh, let me just. Okay, so I'm just going to write that structure over here. Um, so you have a double bond here. And we have a chlorine here and another chlorine atom over here. So there are two ways that we can number this card, this chain. So the first way is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. This way a double bond gets the first, I mean gets to be in the first and the second position. Oh I am so sorry, the structure is different, I'm so sorry. So the double bond is actually here. Okay, so the first way is by having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So if you remember, we had some we had learned something called the lowest uh, the first rule of difference. So our double bond is getting the lowest locants, that is 1 and 2. Okay, so it is in the first position, first and the second position between carbon 1 and 2. Our chlorine atoms are present at the first and the sixth position. Now, let's assume instead of this way, our carbon chain is numbered the other way around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Right. So, the chlorine, the, the, one, the chlorine atoms are at positions 2 and 3. If you think about it, rationally speaking, the first instinct for us would, would have been to number it as 2,3-dichlorocyclohex-1-ene. But because it follows the first point of difference rule, and at the first point of difference, this is actually higher, 2 and 3 is actually higher than 1 and, I mean, 2 is actually higher than 1 this makes 1 and 6 numbering right and 2 and 3 wrong. So we're following the first rule of, so first point of difference rule. And that is what makes the name of the compound as 1 comma 6 dichloro hex 1 in. Remember this might be some, this might be an error that we might commit because Rationally speaking, 2 and 3 would have been the first thing we thought about. But because of the first point of difference rule, we are only considering the difference at the first substituent. So between 1 and 6 and 2 and 3, 1 is obviously less than 2 because of which 1, 6 is considered the right one, right way of naming this particular compound. 
So in this compound, you have two ways of numbering it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And we also have it as 1, 2. Basically, we are changing the direction. It could be clockwise or anti-clockwise. 3, 4, 5 and 6. So the substituents with pink ink are at the second and the fourth position. Whereas with the brown ink, they are at the first and the fifth position position and because according to first point of difference rule one is lesser than two obviously one and five is the right one and two and four is the wrong one for a better explanation for the first point of difference rule you have you do check out the video i did about the same when we were discussing the branched chain alkenes so here 1, 5, right? So here methane ethane. So it, it's an ethyl substituent. So 1, 5 diethyl cyclo hex 1 in is the name of the compound. Next, in the next one, we have side chains. So these side chains seem to have a functional group. Then, uh, and the ring has a multiple bond in it actually technically this is supposed to have multiple bonds in it then what we do is the ring is considered the substituent whereas the straight chain is considered the main compound or the main part of the or rather the ring the compound is the derivative of the straight chain so here we have a if you remember, we had to put, uh, when we had a complex substituent in our al branch chain alkanes, we had to put it in brackets. Similarly, here as well, we will pu be putting it in a bracket only. And the carbon it is joined to is considered as carbon number one. And since the one beside it is the second one, this is the third. So the second and third carbon, you have a double bond. And here it's an acid chain so this is that carbon number one because acid is the principal functional group so based on that at the second carbon we have a cyclohexene so cyclo two cyclo hex two ene methane ethane ethanoic ethanoic acid Similarly, when we have an alcohol, here we have an alcohol. This chain is 1, 2, 3, 3 carbon atoms long. And since alcohol is the principal functional group, it is numbered in this order. And since you have to count it from the carbon it has joined to. So at the third position, we have a double bond. So the second carbon atom, 2 cyclo pent. Pent 3 in sorry enyl and so sorry this has to be enyl because we are it is a part of the substituent enyl methane ethane propane propane 1 all so that's the name of these compounds since this is a part of the substituent it is not ene it will be written as en y l next in these two compounds here the ring and the side chain consist of functional groups so till now we learned about the ring having the functional group attached directly to it or the side chain in these cases however we have both the ring as well as the side chain consisting of some or the other functional group and in that case in that case, uh, the compound is considered a derivative of the alicyclic ring or the side chain. So, whichever is having the principal functional group based on the order of priority that we had studied when we studied about compounds having two or more functional groups, that is considered the main part of the compound. The other would be the substituent. Now, here you have an acid group and an alcohol group. We know acid gets more priority compared to the alcohol group. So, this compound is, is an acid okay and it has one two three oh sorry i'm sorry i'm so sorry 
has to be the other way around because the principal function group has to get the least number. So 1, 2 and 3. So 1 is the acid position and at the third position we have a ring which is bound to an alcohol. Now this is at the third. So the third carbon is bound to a cyclohexane. So cyclo it is not just a cyclohexane, it has a hydroxyl group at the, which the position the same as this one. So here we will be numbering it in the same way. 1, 2, 3, 4th carbon is having the hydroxyl group attached to it. So 4 hydroxyl, sorry, hydroxy cyclohexyl. Propanoic acid. So the three denotes the fact that the third carbon atom is bound to a cyclohexane ring. And from what we learned here also, the numbering is in such a way that the one which is joined at the side chain, that is what is getting the one. So this is the first carbon, second, third, and fourth. At the fourth carbon, we have an alcohol group attached to it. Now in the next one, we have a CONH2, that is an amide. We have a double bonded O, which is a ketone. And here we have a double bond. Now, based on whatever we learned, first of all, CONH2 is the principal functional group. So it's an amide. Right, and this is a ketone. Now, for double bonds, <coughs> it has to be in position 1, and 2 and this would be the order because of the fact that if we go in this order the first position there's a substituent and the third and since we have a double bond that gets more priority so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 for the cycle <coughs> we are writing it in the clockwise order now so the name of the compound 1 2 3 so at the third part, third carbon we have this ring which is not, which is a 6 oxo cyclo hex 1 enyl methane ethane propane it's a three membered ring pro pro pan amide so here in these cases we had considered the principal functional group and the principal functional group decided which would be the substituent and which would be the main chain. However, if both the main as well as the side chain had the same group, same functional group, which one would be selected? So whichever has the more number of carbon atoms that will form the the main part of the the main compound whereas the other would be the substituent so in this case you have methane you have a six membered ring and you have three carbon atoms which means the six membered ring is going to be the main whereas over here you have one two three four again here as well you have four plus and you have a, oh i'm so sorry here they're supposed to be cho both of them have the same functional group but the four is less so the compound is considered the derivative of the cyclic compound. So the name of this compound would be here priority goes to the hydroxy. Um, it's in such a way that both of them get less number. So it start from here. One, two, three. Sorry. So first position for alcohol, second for the other substituted product. So here, the second carbon, you have methane, ethane, propane, and 1, 2, and 3. Similar to how we numbered co co uh, the complex substituent, we are numbering it the same way. So at the second position, you have a hydro hydroxy group. So hydroxy propyl and since it's a six-membered ring, Cyclo hexan one all. Similarly, here also you have a four membered chain one, two, three, and four. And this is a six membered ring. Obviously, this would be the main 
1. So, fourth position we have a four, so 1, 2, 3, 4. This is at the fourth position, and at the fourth position we have an aldehyde group. So, 4 formyl. 4 membered ring, so butyl, cyclohexan, one carbaldehyde. Now there is a reason we are saying calling this carbaldehyde. This is because the function the carbon is a separate part so that's what i will discuss over here so this is cyclohexan 1 carbaldehyde the next one we have a functional group as a sub as well as a substituent is present so in that case the functional group will obviously get more priority and in case of both of them being you know functional group then the one which is considered to be the principal functional group that will get more priority so in this case 1 2 and 3 so 1 sorry 3 methyl cyclohexan 1 all similarly in this case here the ketone group gets more priority because of the order of principal prefunctional groups so 3 hydroxy cyclohexan 1 on the last one is when the alicyclic group ring is attached to a functional group that contains a carbon atom. That's exactly what happened here as well. So here the carbon atom is not included in the parent name. So we need to in, you know, basically include that particular part. So CHO, this just CHO becomes cyclohexan carbaldehyde. And this has two functional groups. COH will get more is more priority than CN. So two cyano cyclohexan one carboxylic acid. So this carbon atom is not a part of the ring, the parent ring. So because of that has to be denoted or shown as a separate one. Here you have a COH group, a CHO and a ketone. So technically this has to get the first, pri this has first priority, then uh, the aldehyde, then the ketone. So COH, so two formyl. So this is a formyl group. Because if you have any doubts regarding this, go check out the video about the functional group and the ordering of the functional group to select the principal functional group. So two formyl, the fourth position we have a ketone, four oxo, cyclohexan, hexane, one carboxylic, Acid. So with that we finish alicyclic compounds. So we started with having a double bond. In case of a double bond is present, we'll have to consider the the lowest locants for the double bond. That is one and two, and the remaining substituents are numbered in terms of the first point of difference rule. Then, if we have a functional group which is attached to the straight chain, then the straight chain automatically becomes the main one, and the you know side the cyclic compounds become become its cyclic part become its substituent and then we had two two groups uh, two functional groups present in that case the principal functional group is decided based on its order of priority and whichever is the principal functional group that is considered the main chain and if both of the both the side chain as well as the main part of the chain i mean the side chain as in the straight chain as well as the cyclic ring consists of the same functional group whichever has more number of carbon atoms is considered the main uh, main part of the compound next we learnt about uh, if it has both a substituent as well as 
if the ring it has both the substituent as well as a functional group priority is given to the functional group over the substituent or rather whichever the principal functional group based on its order again that's given priority last one we learned about the fact that if the carbon atom is not a part of the ring it has to be mentioned separately and that's how we did carb carbaldehyde carboxylic acid that shows that the carbon is not a part of the ring with that we finished ali cyclic compounds next video we will be learning in text questions or rather solving in text questions after which we will be discussing about nomenclature for aromatic or rather the benzene containing aromatic rings do check it out